five at four. Fox 30 Action News Jax begins with breaking news. The manhunt is over. A Jacksonville father and son have been arrested following a deadly shooting and hostage situation. I'm Letitia Barriola in for Tanika. I'm John Bachman. The sheriff's office announced those arrests in the last two hours. In January, the Jacksonville woman held hostage in her home ran to an Action News Jax reporter, Elizabeth Pace, there shortly after she escaped. The shooting happened at a shopping plaza on Merrill Road in Arlington. A young man was killed. The suspect got away in a stolen car, but it crashed about half a mile away, and that's when police say the suspect held that woman hostage in her home. Now, she was able to escape, and the suspects were seen on surveillance video running through a backyard right there. We highlighted it for you. Today, 21-year-old Hakeem Robinson was charged with murder. His father, Abdul, was charged with accessory after the fact. Right now, Action News Jax is heading to the original crime scene, working to speak with that woman who was held hostage again. We'll have a live update next on Action News Jax at 5. Also breaking at this hour, Jacksonville police investigating a shooting in the Newtown neighborhood. This is a live look right there. Looks like that's a school in the background. It happened near Acorn and West Beaver Streets, but definitely see a police presence there, some crime scene tape up. Action News Jack's crew, we just got there where police say the shooting happened just about 15 minutes ago. So we are there working to get some more information for you. Let's get a better look at the neighborhood here at this map. So it isn't far from I-95, and a Google map search shows, okay, several churches and schools in the area. That's what we see in the background there. We want to take you back out to what our live crews are seeing. We are standing by for an update from police, uh, and that's a live look there at Acorn. You see the cars. Okay, now we're zooming out. And so, yep, yeah, they got a road blocked off there. So as soon as we get more information on what exactly happened there, we'll get right back to you. Just into the Action News Jack's newsroom, a new picture of three guns brought into a local school were just released on your screen here. Action News Jax first broke this story just before 11 this morning that a 12-year-old student in Nassau County was arrested for bringing these three guns to class. Since then, we've learned the student was turned over to the juvenile detention center where he could face serious charges. A lot happening this afternoon. Action News Jack's Lorena Inclan is live at Lighthouse Christian School in Callahan. Lorena, this all unfolded yesterday during lunchtime. John and Letitia, a teacher, was aware enough to notice that this particular student brought two lunch boxes to school instead of one, and then she also realized that one of those lunch boxes seemed to be pretty heavy. Now, it happened here at this school behind me, Lighthouse Christian School, and also uh, we're told that the deputies, that's where the deputies say that two of the three guns were found inside a lunch box. The Nassau County Sheriff's Office shared this photo with Action News Jacks showing the three handguns a 12-year-old is accused of bringing to school Thursday. It happened here at the Lighthouse Christian School in Callahan, where Troy Arnold has been the director for nine years. Never had anything like this happen before, but uh, you, you have to be ready. And when it happens, you have to do what you have to do. Arnold says the student has attended the school for at least two years and has never had any issues until yesterday. One of our teachers noticed the student with two lunch boxes, which she thought was unusual. According to the police report, the student reluctantly allowed her to see the lunch box when asked. That's when she discovered the butt of a gun. When we found the weapon, she brought him immediately to me. We secured him. I secured a weapon, scared the student, and law enforcement was here in no time. Staff also found a disturbing drawing at the boy's desk showing a man outside of a school with guns surrounded by dead bodies covered in red marker. Now, as I mentioned, two of those guns were found in, the lunch, in a lunchbox, and then the third gun, a sheriff's deputy found that third gun on the student while he was interviewing him when they got here to this school. Now, next at five, the boy's mom admitted to police uh, that about her, what the boy's mom admitted to police about her son's past that raised alarms and also how she believes that he may have gotten his hands on these guns. Reporting live from Callahan, Lorena Inclan, Fox 30 Action News Jacks. 
Well, Action News Jax was first to alert this breaking news story just before 11 this morning. So if you have the app and the alerts on, you saw this first. Get breaking news the moment it happens. All you got to do is download the mobile app. It's free in your app store. All right, first alert, weather team tracking on and off showers throughout our area this afternoon. Kind of the pattern we've been in. And we have a live look at First Alert Doppler HD where uh, you can see the uh, showers moving off the coast. I guess they're heading northwest. Garrett will tell us all about that in a second. First, let's give you a live look right now at I-95 uh, southbound there and uh, traffic moving nicely. And actually the sun is out, but you can see the tropical air there. I think that's what I'd call it anyway. Let's see what Garrett has to say. Garrett? Thick. I call it thick. And thick tropical air is what we're seeing. Rain down to your neighborhood and get alerts when lightning is near. Download the First Alert weather app. Free in the app store. Just search Action News Jax. Today is the last day of hybrid learning for sixth graders in Duval County. This is a video from the Action News Jax Sky Vision drone of Duncan Fletcher Middle School in Jacksonville Beach. Sixth graders who started the school year attending class in person for a few days a week will now attend in person full time. Some parents. We're happy to hear the news. Others tell us they're still worried. Higher risk comes from sitting indoors um, in areas that aren't as well ventilated in close contact with each other. I think we're going to see more folks you know, being exposed and going on quarantine. The following Monday, the 21st, 7th and 8th graders will return back full time as well. After that, high schoolers will return September 28th. This does not apply to students who are enrolled in Duval Home Room. They will continue virtually. Since the beginning of the school year, 32 students and 12 staff members have tested positive for the virus in Duval County. That's according to the district's coronavirus tracker. In St. John's County, 12 students and 4 staff members tested positive on the first week of school. The district has not updated its tracker since last Friday. Links to both of the district's coronavirus trackers are posted on actionnewsjax.com. Click on the back to class banner at the top of the home page. Today Action News Jax learned the Clay County School District is also developing a coronavirus tracker. No timeline on when it will be ready to release. District leaders tell Action News Jax that the state is developing one for all of Florida's school districts. In just a few days, you can taste your favorite beer on tap at a local bar. Bars and breweries in Florida are cleared to reopen on Monday. The state will allow them to reopen at 50% capacity and stay open until 2 a.m. Local bar owners and employees say it has been such a struggle since the bars were ordered to completely shut down in June. Many got licenses to sell food so they could open at some capacity and survive. Leaders at one local bar says they're happy to get back to the business they love. Ecstatic. You know, this year has been really, really tough on a lot of us. And this is just the rainbow after the storm that's starting to show up or the light at the end of the tunnel. Bars will be allowed to serve customers seated at the bar and serve guests who are seated outside in a socially distanced manner. You can find the new daily cases reported in Georgia and Florida on ActionNewsJax.com. We also have the latest local numbers scrolling right there at the bottom of your screen throughout the day. Tonight, hundreds if not thousands of fans, players, and coaches in Duval County go back under the Friday night lights. Duval County got a taste of high school football last night. Let's bring in Action Sports Jack Stuart Weber. And Stuart, now it ramps up even more. Yeah, all spring and summer, this is what high school football fields look like. No spring practice, no summer seven-on-sevens, and then a delay to the start of practice here in town. Now, last night, Andrew Jackson hosting the first Duval County Public School game of the season. You could tell the lights were on, and they picked up a resounding win over Englewood. The scene on Main Street and all over the area different this season. Social distancing in the stands and on the sideline. The band in one end zone, and then those of us with a camera on the other end. But the games are officially underway. Here's a quick look at some of the top games in our area tonight, including the Battle of Longleaf Pines, St. John's. County rivals, Creekside and Bartram Trail going at it. Our game of the week features two of the top teams in the state, Bowles and Trinity Christian. In Duval County, Mandarin and Atlantic Coastal meet up, plus north of the border, Glynn and Camden County. Of course, we're going to have all these games and a whole lot more from just about every county in our viewing area, so be sure to tune in for the Friday Night Blitz that's coming up later on tonight. In the studio, Stuart Weber, Action Sports Checks. Some good games on tap tonight. Thank you, Stuart. CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jacks, your official Jaguars stations, and we are counting down to the Jaguars opener. 
Three days until the Jags host the Colts inside the bank. That game is Sunday on CBS 47 at 1 o'clock. All right, we want to know how you plan to watch the Jag season opener on Sunday. So you got at home as an option, go into the bank, TIAA Bank Field, or a watch party. Are you having people over? Uh, so right now, we're at 86% say you are not watching at all. But I think we need more people voting. So help me out here. Go to actionnewsjacks.com backslash or slash vote. And let us know what you think. My vote is home at 0%. <laughs> Join me. Vote. Action News Jax wants to see your Jags gear ahead of the Sunday's game. So all you got to do is take a picture of you and your family, submit it on actionnewsjax.com, and just look for this story on the homepage right under the top story. Let's get into the spirit. Football is here. Your official Jaguar stations have you covered all game day. Join us starting at 11.30 Sunday morning on CBS 47 for countdown to kick off. And then after the game, you can go to our Facebook page or our mobile app for our post-game show. We'll hear instant game day reaction from players and coaches. And right now I'm going over the latest data here for you. I'm tracking the traffic for you. That disturbance over the Florida Straits and near the Bahamas, where it's headed through the weekend, and if it's forecast to develop. Coming up in your Action News, Jack's first alert, seven-day forecast. Tommy Hazori Jr. in federal court this morning facing 25 pounds of child pornography. What we learned about his mental health and the state before heading into trial. We'll have the latest coming up on Action News, Jack's at 5. Plus, after the break, we're remembering the deadliest terrorist attack 19 years later, how the lives of nearly 3,000 Americans were commemorated here at home. We're following breaking news in Clay County. We have some new video showing Clay County deputies investigating what they're saying is a bank robbery. This is at the Fifth Third Bank at Wells Road and Crossing Boulevard. In the last five minutes, we've learned one person has been detained by deputies. They are asking the public to use caution in this area, so they are still investigating. It's quite the active scene right there. We'll continue to keep our eyes on this and let you know any more developments. I want to get you back out to another live story we're co uh, covering right now, breaking news. Jacksonville police are investigating a shooting in the Newtown neighborhood. Police say it happened. This is Acorn and West Beaver Street. So uh, right behind there is a school. Uh, Eugene Butler may sound familiar to you. That's what is right there in front of this scene. So crews just arrived. Our crew just arrived there. Police say the shooting happened though about 25 minutes ago or so. And so... Yeah, we're been seems to be the center mm -hmm. of the investigation. Yes, pickup truck involved in this investigation somehow. Some people on the side there we saw police interviewing as well. So we're working to get some more answers. We will be live on this throughout the newscast at five as well. So stay with us as we learn more. Lloyd Stanford Brown. Patrick John Brown. Bettina. B. Brown Radburn. Mark Bruce. Richard George. Those names, even Bruner. 19 years later. Wow. Andrew Naval Station Mayport held a special remembrance ceremony this morning to honor the nearly 3,000 people who died in the 9 11 terrorist attacks again 19 years ago today. Action News Jack's Alicia Tarancon, she was there and explains why this day is so meaningful for so many local people. Thank <laughs> you.